Welcome to The Business Grind, where we give you an inside perspective on what it takes to start, build, and run a successful business. Here are your hosts, Danny Shaw and Sean Michael Wellington. All right. Hello to everyone in podcast land. Welcome back to another episode of The Business Grind. Um, How are we doing today, Sean? Doing good. Um, Feeling like, uh, you know, we got a new docu-series to talk about today. Yes, indeed. Thanks for joining us. All right. So um, today's episode, we're going to go into the world of health and tech, you know, as we review a big vape, The Rise and Fall of Jewel uh, is a docu-series on Netflix, right? So essentially, it goes into the controversy surrounding Jewel, uh, the rise and fall, and all the behind-the-scenes business deals and dramas and things that was going on that led to uh, the rise and ultimately the fall of the company, right? Right, and the company went like came and went so fast. Um, right, kind of at least from my perspective as as a non jeweler, um, as they're called. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, it just felt like it was everyone had them for a while, and then all of a sudden you de- you barely see them anymore. Right, right. Um, and I will say, you know, before we get into it, I'm not I'm not a smoker, so you know my exposure to the product and even to the world of, of vaping and stuff is is very limited i i know when they were when they were big um you know i just noticed a lot of people vaping but i wasn't totally aware of all the intricacies going on behind the scenes about it to after the fact you know yeah like the nuances between the products and stuff right 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 right, right. so uh so yeah so uh and sean are you do you i don't think you smoke right no, um, but I have tried a jewel before, like back when it was big. I tried it. Oh, to see what okay. The deal was, so. All right, yeah, okay. So, wow, okay. There we go. We got some firsthand uh, experience <laughs> over here from you. Cool. All right. So yeah. So let's get into it. So I think first we could just talk about like how the company was started, right? So, um, it was started by uh, Adam Bowen, um, and James Monsies. Those were the two founders who. Uh, created the company. Uh, they were hard, uh, not Harvard, excuse me, Stanford uh, University uh, graduates um, and came together uh, to build this product. Um, early on in the episodes, uh, what was interesting to me at least, Sean, was that uh, the way they kind of framed the relationship of the founders and how they came about and also like how they approach creating this product, uh, which is essentially trying to create a way for people to stop smoking or stop being addicted to smoking using you know the design thinking process which is a very very popular methodology for designing products and and things nowadays and not just products but solving social problems as a whole i actually um have a lot of experience in that range of uh of discussions and approaches so i was a bit surprised uh, to see that early on in the episode yeah they were uh very intentional at least in the beginning about mm-hmm. being anti big tobacco and they were right. against big tobacco and they weren't they were like you know trying to fight that industry really right 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 so that that was a, a bit of a twist early on considering what i do know them for and for what they were known for eventually early on right um so Early on, the the show kind of goes into just how they approached this, how they were going about it, uh, the the, the trial and error, uh, and even given a history of of the vaping industry as a whole, right? Um, Up until Jill, like, if you were a vapor, it was considered, uh, I guess for lack of a better, a fringe a fringe activity <laughs> amongst workers because there was no, not much consistency. The designs of these products were all or v- very clunky. They went all over the place. It was, it was, it was just wasn't seen as a cool thing to do by mainstream culture, right? Right, and then even within the smoking, the smokers of the world, right, mm. the product itself was a little too complicated and a little too bulky and had too many. You know, just complicated. It was too complicated for mass consumption and to be like a mass produced, mass marketed product. Right, right. So, you know, just and just to kind of set the ground, the stage here, I think for a lot of people, they would probably ask, well, how could a new smoking product help people um, who are addicted to cigarettes? Right. Like, isn't it a one for one? But I guess from my understanding, in a way it was presented is that. Uh, you would still get the impact or the effects of uh, 
of, of smoking uh, and um, even the nicotine hit to an extent, but uh, it was removing a lot of the other chemicals that goes into making a cigarette and it would help you uh, become less addictive and could ultimately help wean you off cigarettes as well. Is, was that your understanding? Yeah, my understanding was specifically the combustion of smoking, right? The mm -hmm. lighting, the cigarette on fire, mm -hmm. is or part of it, kind mm -hmm. of the, the uh, perspective there was mm -hmm. kind of so like they eliminated the combustion by vaporizing it instead of burning it. So mm -hmm. you're still getting nicotine, you're still getting that addictive quality, but all the chemicals burning is what they were trying to eliminate. Yeah. Right, exactly. So um, early on, they definitely even before the mainstream attention and, and problems that they had, a lot of the problems early on was actually with the device itself, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, trying to uh, get the mechanism and the engineering in place that would allow these things to function correctly, the right amount of um, combination of, of products and chemicals that would allow that nicotine hit. Um, they also had a lot of issues with the faulty, uh, <laughs> faulty designs of the product, accidents, even early on trying to uh, fill in the uh, the, the chemicals that would allow you to smoke it, actually. So there was a lot of issues early on, even before they reached that mainstream uh, popularity, right? Um, but what I thought was interesting is with within all those issues, they still were okay with shipping it, you know, and, and pushing yeah, it out well, to the market. Yeah, well, I think they said at that stage of the game, mm -hmm. there was zero to no regulation mm -hmm. of e-cigarettes and e -pro or, uh, vaping products. So they kind of had the, you know, free reign to do what they wanted at that point. Right, right, right. Which definitely, uh, for me, it, it I, I don't want to sound so cynical, but it, it really just made me say, well, that's, it's kind of more of the the nonsense that goes on on that side of the industry where it's like, hey, we're trying to do good and you know, but there's a lot of reckless energy and behavior that's done along the way in the name of, quote unquote, doing good for the world, you know? Yeah, um, I don't want to jump too far ahead of where you may be going, but mm -hmm. a lot of the problems arise with too many cooks in the kitchen having too much right. control over the recipes, right? They right. were very much influential in the, the product development, mm -hmm. the investors, and mm -hmm. then James and um, Adam didn't really have a chance to, you know, they strayed away from their original vision, I think. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. So yeah, so early on, they, you know, they're trying to play around. They're not having much success. There's faulty products. The designs isn't really going too well. Um, and also, you know, they're not even able to form these partnerships with uh, with these smoke shops and vape shops uh, in, in the country. Like, no one really wants to buy them. They're trying to do demo product presentations. And uh, it's just not really happening. It's, it's it's not going as well as they want to, and and aligned with the along with the issue of trying to help people uh, stop smoking cigarettes. It just didn't seem like everything was clicking, right? They they approached it, and you talk a lot about you know the tech bros mentality mm -hmm. and other uh, breakdowns we've done. They very much approached it with that mentality of like, yo, this is a tech issue. Mm -hmm. We want to be a tech company. We want to solve this as if. Apple, Alphabet, Google, or you know, Meta, Facebook, one of those companies mm -hmm. were solving this issue. That's how they saw themselves. That's right, all. right. And, and, and just doing it in a way that addressed public health concerns, right? Um, but they did start to hit a little bit of a, a turning point inadvertently. Uh, the first successful products, right, um, was, was not popular because of the use of, of uh, you know, weaning people off cigarettes, it was popular because a lot of weed smokers use it instead, right? Because the mechanism allowed it, allowed people to burn their weed in a more cleaner manner and use it and, and, and do it more seamlessly, yeah? Right, that was their packs, right. uh, was what it was called. That was their first kind of, um, that wasn't their first product. Um, their first product was actually Plume, right? That oh, was yes. the first name. Excuse me, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but packs was kind of their their um, most successful plume didn't really have the breakthrough that that they wanted but pax did like you said through the weed culture mm -hmm. and the marijuana like consumption increasing with the legalization across the country so. right right exactly so that that kind of made them more cool and popular and you know more awareness to the to the overall brand but then 
you know, pressure from the investors like, hey, this is cool, but this is not enough. This is not what we signed up for. This isn't what we're really trying to do and be associated with a weed company. So what's the next product? What's the next iteration? How are we going to get larger and bigger? And, you know, more innovation and more experimentation ultimately got them to uh, the jewel, which was just a more potent hit of the nicotine and cigarette effect. Yeah. Yeah. And but before you uh, before we move on to the jewel. It was interesting. I just want to talk. What did you think about the investor relationships? Because they were dead at one point in the water with uh, Plume. Right. Um, and it was before PAX came along. They were able to make PAX only because they got like investment from this Chinese tobacco, or excuse me, Japanese tobacco company. Right, right. Um, so it just felt like they were, I mean, it maybe it's the, always the, the situation with Silicon Valley, but they weren't really able, they were really uh, limited and only able to do things when their investors gave them the lifeline, I felt like. Absolutely, which is a key point. <laughs> Absolutely, right? You, th- These are your backers. These you're you're limited by what your backers will allow you to do or not do so yes i totally agree um they can only do so much money runs out or even the direction of the company may not be in line with what the investors want you to do and where they want you to go so you always got to play that that line as well right yeah so like like you said they got this investment from this japanese company Mm -hmm. it was 10 million right um but once they started getting in uh into the marijuana game and they were like known for a marijuana delivery system that -hmm. company wanted no parts so they actually had to pay back the 10 million dollars which i've never heard of before i don't know if that's common or not i don't know either but that sounded a bit all over the place It, it it really sounded a bit all over the place but that's what they was rolling with right so they got this a new investor um and then that's when they start so at this point the japanese investors was out right um yeah yeah and they also had an investor board that i guess for a lack of a better term was not they wasn't really aligned with the mission it seemed like the investor board was really just aligned with profitability right and maybe then yeah i mean they were able to like really play on on one investor and i'm forgetting his name right now but Mm -hmm. ralph was his name because Mm -hmm. i remember he talked about his mother i don't Mm -hmm. remember his last name but they were really able to play the heartstrings with someone like him his mom died from smoking Mm -hmm. so some of them maybe were aligned in theory or in the overall cause but like you said it all became profit driven (laughs) by the end of it by the end of it right exactly exactly so then okay so they have that um, and then as they're moving forward with, with the jewel and it's like, wow, this is really hitting and, you know, we're not going to kind of go through all the nuances about some of the problems that were still happening with the actual product. Cause they, it's not like they designed the perfect product with the jewel and it was ready. It was still a lot of manufacturing itches with the jewel, but, uh, jewel was their breakout product, so to speak. Right. Um, jewel was their biggest product for right, sure. Exactly. Uh, very popular. Uh, very seen as very cool and the thing to do and to have. But they caught a lot of flack with that, uh, mainly a lot because of how they went about marketing and promoting it, right? Yeah, and there's like an early line in this um, thing, which may be something, you know, I've never heard this phrase before, but maybe something, you know, that's common in the Silicon Valley industry. It's like, you need to spend as much, and I'm paraphrasing, but you need to spend as much as your marketing as you are in your development, they mm-hmm. said. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of interesting to me when you're talking about a product that affects people's health, right? right. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but, and so the marketing was really, you know, it took a play out of Big, Tobac- t- Big Tobacco's marketing playbook, which is, you know, reach out to the kids, make it look cool, make it look trendy, basically going for the younger audience. Uh, you know, and as I'm watching and I'm seeing the play by play and the comparisons, I'm like, it's very hard not to see how this wasn't taken out of the playbook of the uh, big tobacco marketing, marketing strategy of old. Uh, even though they, you know, the, the art director and the marketing guys tried to say, oh, it wasn't like that. And, you know, they kind of denied that. Uh, that's definitely how it came across and how it looked, right? Um, then they also had these initiatives where they would go into the schools to try to teach kids about the, the, the perils and dangers of being addicted to smoking. But while they were doing that, uh, there was reports of them promoting Juul as being the safer alternative and stuff. So it was a lot of 
what are we doing here? You say you want to do one thing, but your actions is not really lining up, you know? Yeah, this started off as a mission to stop people from smoking, and it kind of ended as a mission just to get people to jewel. Right, so. right. So, you know, and that's where it kind of got a little fu funny for me because I'm like, you know, as they're becoming more successful, it doesn't seem like the mission is really the same, even though they keep saying that's still the mission. The actions wasn't lining up, and it also kind of sounded like as if maybe the thought was, hey, once we get enough money, then we can pivot back to the goal of the company or, or our original mission. Is that is that what you got? Yeah, I, that's what I got. I don't know if they, how successful they were with that, but that is the impression I got, yeah. Right, because it'd be one minute where I'm hearing reports of the founders acting real, you know, break fast, a move fast and break stuff mentality, and you can't really do that when it comes to health. <laughs> you can't really move like that when it comes to things regarding people's health. But then at the same time saying, hey, we're still trying to, you know, help people uh, with their addictions. It, But your marketing is geared towards younger people who are not even, you know what I mean? It was just a lot of conflicting actions and messaging going on here. Conflicting actions for real. So I think when you said that, I think of... And I, and you got to forgive me, I don't remember if this was Plume or if this was Jewel at this point, but they were doing the product development and they realized that the, that first hit wasn't enough, right? It didn't right. compare to a cigarette first hit. Mm -hmm. So, like, they knew the smokers wouldn't convert. They might be like, all right, this is cool, but I'm still going to stick with, you know, that cigarette hit. Right. And they redeveloped the formula and the, and the device so that that first hit was stronger. They I forget what they called it. They had, like, a... a, a uh, hit test yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so they were yeah, doing yeah, hit yeah. tests yeah. With, with their employees not uh -huh. even like a scientific research like mm -hmm. you know control and 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 you know it was just like i right, get five people from the office make them take 10 hits in eight minutes and pretty much see out you know what i mean like yeah. so this bus is, test this is what's called buzz <laughs> yeah testing. this is not in a a closed scientific environment health facility you know not following any really procedure for the most part you know uh, but yeah, I think, uh, for sure, um, that's, that's also a lot of, a lot of those, those actions and those type of exercises really made me think like, Hmm, how, how dedicated are you to the mission? If this is how we're going about it. Right. But at the same time, I guess the thought is, Hey, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something to even be successful to ensure that we're going to be here long enough to get to the mission. Right. Um, so. Yeah, and I understand that. I understand they, you know, I don't fault at least James Adam as much mm -hmm. as, you know, some of the investors because it seems like they were listening to their audience and trying to deliver something mm -hmm. that, you know, would be successful, right? That's that's what it is at the end of the day. Right, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, throughout all of this, you know, they're being successful. They, you know, they got they definitely caught the flag for the marketing campaign. They were still rolling through, rolling with it. Um, but you know, now they're becoming cool social media people picking up on them. And this is, I think it's probably around the time when I personally became more aware of this product, uh, in my everyday dealings. I just, I definitely felt like there was a point where no matter where I turned, somebody was, was vaping, whether it was a jewel or, or a similar product, there was, it, you just, I just couldn't escape it at one point. Right? Yeah. I think that was like 2018, maybe <laughs> yeah. I feel like. Everybody, yeah, everybody had something in their hand, some mm -hmm. sort of device. Right, right. So then I think this is when it got a little, not even more interesting, but a new development came about was the health considerations uh, for using uh, the Jewel, right? So um, saying that you want to put a product out that is going to uh, help with addiction and help people lives better and, you know, impacting the health community. But now we started seeing all these reports on the side effects of, of using this vaping tool uh, and vaping product. And, you know, it was all attributed to Jewel, Jewel usage um, and based on the, the way the product was engineered and manufactured and how it was impacting these teenagers bodies and even causing a few deaths. Right? Yeah, it was causing a few deaths. And the interesting thing is that 
it wasn't always <laughs> the core product, right? It right. were bootleggers out there and right. faulty ones and out there. So they kind of, they were so big, they caught all the flack and all the blame for even the faulty products that they didn't help manufacture at all. So I have a, I, what'd you think about that? I, I, my eye, it was a lot of eyebrow raising moments in this uh, documentary, but what did you think of that? The fact that they didn't, that the bootleggers were killing people? What, what, what aspect of it? I kind of felt like they tried to put it all on the bootleggers. They did. They tried to, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they definitely did. Um, I was like, yeah, uh, I mean, they shifted the blame. Yeah. And um, I mean, they had the evidence to kind of back up their claims to a degree, right? So, um, I mean, it, I don't, uh, for me, for me, uh, it was a bit of a gray area, I will say. I'm I'm not dismissing the, um, I'm not, I'm not dismissing the bootlegger claims, not, not at all. But also considering how they went about creating their own product and how they went about testing and how they went about, you know, there was so many incidents of reports on how some of the flavors were seeping out and people's mouths yeah, and, and mm-hmm. you know leakage and stuff like that so for me i'm sure a lot of that could be attributed to black market and, and bootleggers selling bootleg products to put in these pens but for me it didn't totally put jewel in the clear that based on how they their track record of history with their own products so yeah i don't know that that yeah that's... it's gray area i agree with you i think there's there's a motivation to create profit so you know, it, in theory, right? Mm-hmm. These these bootleggers are stealing money from you. They're taking right. money from you. Right. But it's still a marketing, right? So mm-hmm. it's like pe- the fact that there are these many faulty products that look like your product. It makes people think of your product, and it makes your product. And it's it increases its foothold as number one e cigarette vaping device in the market. Right. So it's it's, it's a gray area. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I, I I felt like that was a. It just felt a bit too convenient that they would put it all on the bootleggers. It seems like they didn't want to hold their self accountable as well for some of the things they were doing that was contributing to this place, this, these circumstances. Um, but then they got on the radar, or not got, they was on a lot of people's radar, but the FDA got involved, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> and then the FDA... Uh, Food Drug Administration introduced legislation that essentially said, I don't know the full scope of the details, but essentially uh, the products that they already had on the market that Juul and the company as a whole already had was fine. They wasn't going to like regulate that or, or do anything to take those out the market. But essentially any new products that came out uh, from Juul had to go through a really scrutinized process to 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 be approved to be put on the market right um and this kind of definitely uh caused another shift in dynamics and their strategy on how they went about business and who they will could work with and who they couldn't work with uh and it it, it definitely shifted the energy around them um and then it seemed like it came at a surprise to the FDA and everyone else involved uh, was that during this process and during this time when Jill was getting their paperwork in order and their application in process and just trying to make a case for themselves, they cut a deal with Big Tobacco. Right. And it's technically their second deal because that JTI company, they're not an American tobacco company, but it's still a tobacco company. And that's right. what kind of got them off the ground. But yeah, you're right. Then they cut a deal with Marlboro's parent company. Right, right. right. Uh, Altria. And for people who may not know, Altria is the, you know, used to be like Philip Morrison and the old tobacco companies, right? They used to, um, I don't even know all the cigarettes that they used to uh, uh, create, but all those big tobacco companies kind of like rebranded afterwards, right? And rechanged their names and restructured and stuff like that. So, uh, Jewel made a deal with Altria, uh, which is Big Tobacco, which kind of, again, is like, hmm, what are we doing now? Because for a lot of the employees who worked at uh, Jewel, you know, they joined because they believed in the mission of trying to help people get off their cigarette addiction. And they they always looked at Big Tobacco as the as the 
enemy uh, as their competition. So to be taking this money or being a partnership, it was like, mm, what, what are we doing here, right? And then for the FDA, it was kind of like, hey, you was you was moving in bad faith and bad conscience as you're getting your making your case to us and getting things in order. You don't disclose that you're working on a possible deal with Big Tobacco, right? Yeah. So Adam and James like pretty much became billionaires overnight, but the sentiment of the company and the product itself was like just on a downward trajectory. I feel like right. And then I I, I do recall that when uh, one of the testimony testimonials from the um, one of the employees who spoke about what was going on at that time uh and it was very confusing time for for the staff and for everybody and essentially the the speech from the founders was essentially hey look at all this money you're gonna get <laughs> right like what like you know yeah i know yeah like regular your employees were like coming away with these big paydays right so that was kind of how they you're right that's how they softened the blow that's how the they softened the blow it was like yeah i know we're in bed with big tobacco i know we said we were gonna you know this is who we were fighting against but look at all the money you're all gonna get now because it is still and i was like uh i guess listen i'm not gonna say act like money isn't a motivator but uh to say that after you've kind of built your whole company and corporate st and structure under the guise of hey these are the guys we're fighting against and we're going for this type of of goal and achievement uh it is kind of a slap in the face i guess you know it's contradictory to your initial uh vision statement right you've you've gone almost completely opposite direction it's like no we're not going to eliminate tobacco companies we're going to partner with them right and be our chief funders like it's, it's it's you know it's grayer like you said right 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 uh so then okay get the money we have we have um you know billionaires overnight also again a lot of the um the headlines made it seem like everyone was a millionaire in the staff and you know some of the staff was talking about how all of a sudden they're being hit up by random people soliciting their services to help manage their money and stuff like that and then ultimately we get to i guess the conclusion right is essentially people are dying now because of these bootleggers because of these products um and you know, they, they kind of just disappeared as soon as they, as fast as they got exploded on the market. Yeah, it was such a quick rise and fall, <laughs> as the title suggests. Right. right. Um. So, if you could refresh, what, what was it? I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. What officially led to the shutdown? Hmm. Well, I know for a fact they they eliminated, or excuse me, I shouldn't say eliminated, but they, uh, I guess. They regulated the flavors right. that they could come yeah. out with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. So that was huge because mango was their biggest seller. That right. was their most, you know, they were bootlegging mango flavors. Not even the whole device, just right. that one flavor. You had people on black market selling them right. because, um, you know, it was so popular. But that all fed back into the marketing to children and these sweet flavors and things like that. So right. I know that was a big part of it. Right, right, right. So that was that. Yeah, you're right. But so all of that, the investigation, US, you, you know, FDA, uh, just in the lawsuits, it just kind of was like, all right. And then along with the bootleggers and then the e-cigarette bans, uh, San, Fr ah, San Francisco, that's what happened. San Francisco was the one that passed legislation you know, uh, that really yeah. kind of started it because the way it was pers was positioned was that the FDA wasn't either willing or capable enough to really do what they needed to do. Like they started some of the process, but they didn't really finish it. And then that's what happened. Once San Francisco, you know, kind of kickstarted, like we're really going to do something about it, passed legislation. And then afterwards, the FDA you know, they ordered Jewel to remove all his products from the U.S. market. Yeah, yeah, that's, I remember, there we go. Which they did fight, but they yeah. spent billions trying to fight yeah. it. Which, yeah, yeah. So, and then now that's where we are at today with a documentary on the rise and fall, fast rise and fall of, of this e-cigarette company. Yeah. Yeah, um, I learned some new words from this documentary, and I'm, I'm curious, have you ever heard of a decacorn before this documentary? I never knew that was a thing, decacorn. decacorn. I've heard of unicorn, but never heard of decacorn. I've heard of decacorn, but I am 
Yeah, I've heard of it. But go ahead. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, no, I think so. I think it's uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but it has to do with the amount they're evaluated for. Right. right, Once they go public. So it's like unicorns are like and this is me forgetting exact numbers, but I think unicorns are what, like 100 million maybe. And then the deck of corn is, I think, double that or something. I think think, um, unicorn is one billion. Oh, it's one billion. And And deck of corn is 10 billion. 10 billion that's yeah. what it was i knew yeah. it was a factor of 10 okay cool yeah, there yeah. you go so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. nuts that 10 billion dollar company that right that's crazy it is very crazy and to be at that amount and then essentially not be around less than five years later is even crazier to me but yes so you learned the new word all right any other any other insights you got from it um i'm curious your opinion and they talked about it a little bit in the in the documentary, but it's the first thing I thought of even before they got to it is, do you see any synonymous, I'm not trying to drag down another product, guys, but do, do you see anything like similar with Red Bull and Juul? Like in terms of like, it's a product that not necessarily great for you, right? All, mm-hmm. But their marketing campaign was top notch. That's how they get people interested. Um, I don't know, something about Red Bull, and and um and they had Red Bull, a guy who was successful with Red Bull. He was part of the um part of the investing team, if right. I'm not mistaken. Right, but right. I just felt like they're very similar products, very similar like kind of like mm. MOs for me. Mm. I don't know. See, how I didn't. I, it's funny you mention that. I didn't even really put the connection with Red Bull uh, to Jewel. Um, I would say at least. You know, if I'm thinking Red Bull, I'm we we know what Red Bull is, but I'm also thinking with Red Bull, you also have Red Bull. I put in the category of all those like five hour energy drink type of products in the yep. market, and you know, I know at one point everything was an energy drink at one point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and I guess for me myself, I didn't find much value into it uh, uh, from those type of products, like you know, they would be over the counter, but at the same time, at least I wasn't aware of mass death. Deaths happening from a product. That's that's a good point. That's valid. Yes. So that's I, why I say it's not the same. Right, right. I feel like they have. Yeah. You're so right, even so. if I don't drink Red Bull or I don't need those, you know, I don't rock with the energy drinks. I just it wasn't on my radar. It was definitely on my radar that this product was like you know related to a significant amount of deaths that we were not talking about. Uh, I will say for me, what I associated this with, and you know, it's just kind of of a the normal the norm that we see uh in this from this industry you know every industry has failures and by this industry i I mean tech every industry has its failures um and someone on the doc someone in the documentary made a good point and they say you know we always talk about the successful tech businesses that make it and everything but for all the success there's a graveyard of failed tech companies that we don't talk about and we don't see we don't learn from it. We don't take any lessons from those companies and how they failed and, and apply it. We keep trying to emulate the successful ones. And for me, I, I put this one in the same vein of the tech. It was so tech focused and has have that tech bro energy and, and environment that it really comes at the cost of a lot of other things that, you know, technology shouldn't be the only deciding factor. You know what I mean, um, and as yeah. we and we so we see that in this episode, and not in this episode, we'll see it in a lot of other topics and, and businesses that we've covered, where you know, like uh, like a WeWork or a Theranos, like we we've seen this too many times, and for me, it's like, how many times do we have to see this <laughs> to say, hold on, something is happen, something is not right with this approach, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you think that ties into like the celebrity involvement? Because I feel like, especially this product, right? It had a lot of buzzy celebrities using it. You saw the clip of like Dave Chappelle just using it without being, you know, he didn't right. get paid. He was a solicitor. He was just using it. Right. Um. We yeah. What do you what are your thoughts on that side of it? So you know, huh, you know, we are, uh, we are, for for what it is, a lot of people we are celebrity focused, celebrity centric, right? Um, a lot of people take their cues from celebrities, a lot of people from entertainers, it's just athletes. It's, it's on, for me, I think it's kind of unfortunate that this is where we're at, but 
I also can't act like this isn't what it is and see it right in front of me, right? So you see someone like Chappelle. Chappelle did not get an endorsement check. He just used it because he wanted to use it. Who knew? Who knows what influenced him to start using it? But if someone's going to see a celeb like Chappelle use it or whatnot, then or any other celeb, they're going to pick up and want to start using it. That's just kind of, it kind of, it kind of happens, right? <laughs> uh, so when you get a cosign like that, whether you plan for it or not, I don't know. Like, what are, what are we going to tell celebrities to not do that? I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't know the answer there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just such a big part of their rise. Cause I, you know, right. they had a couple examples. They showed um, Sydney Sweeney using the product. Right. Uh, they showed Broad City, that show. I used to watch Broad City all the time. And I saw them using the pack. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it's just so interesting. It brought me back to when I used to watch that show. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's what they were doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, I think for me, you know, a lot of the takeaways I got from here was really being one, you have to be mindful of who you're doing business with, right? And that and as that comes on so many levels. You had one on the investor level, right? Like who are you taking who are you taking money from and under under what terms are you taking the money under, right? And does that even align to your vision and what you're trying to do, right? Um, also the two founders, right? It didn't seem like they seemed cool, but it also seemed like they weren't really always on the same page either well adam got pushed out at one point yeah right? yeah 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 so you know that that's another that there's so many layers of different type of partnerships that you got to be mindful of and then you know they got new investors and then you know the final investor or partner was the big tobacco and then i think you also got to be mindful of if you're if you're a mission focused business i just feel like that is a that is a dangerous lane to be in. If you're a mission driven for profit business, it's not the easiest, right? And the Okay, the for profit side of it is what makes it hard, right? Yes. If you're a for profit mission driven business, that's when it gets a little dicey and it can kinda of throw you off your path or you can make decisions that you know, that may not align with the mission, but it helps keep the business alive for as long as you can keep it alive, right? Um, right? And I definitely saw a lot of that here. Like, this is their mission, but the moves they're making is not really to support the mission, it's really more to keep the business alive to see where they get to eventually. Yeah, so do you think they were good guys or bad guys if you had to pick James and Adams? Nah, I'm not, I don't think they, I, uh, that's, you know, I, I that's a very, it's very black and white, right? Good yeah. or bad, good or bad. I'm a, uh, uh, I'm gonna lean more towards not good. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say bad, but uh, I'm going to say not all the way good because there was just too many instances of of the founder. Some of the stuff he said, some of the some of the speeches he gave to the found to the staff. Some of the interviews, I'm like this. He's 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 walking a fine line, but yeah, no, I'm gonna say more bad than good, personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I do have a lot of respect for him, like seeing a whole industry that had you know has gatekeepers and there was no way in, and he forced his way in, absolutely, kind of shook it up. Absolutely, I respect how he went into it with design um help me out again what exactly design, is that design mentality? thinking the, design thinking design thinking yeah, yeah he was always how's this product gonna look how's it gonna feel in people's hands he was very like i respect the mentality and i respect that kind of like you know bravery to just attack <laughs> one of the biggest industries in america yeah. um but yeah i hear I, I, like you said there's a gray areas there and they cut some corners and did some things where it's like you can't necessarily um you know, turn a blind eye to some of the decisions they made. Yeah, right. So for me, it's like, hey, I get what you were trying to do. Absolutely recognize the disruptiveness that you caused to the industry. Absolutely. But then it was just other things. I'm like, oh, you know, you know, he seemed very, he seemed a little bit too proud of shipping broken stuff. And, mm. you know, he went on record speaking about it. Like literally his own, you know, if it's broken, fuck it, ship it, right? So I was like, well, when you kind of move like that, to me, I don't get the sense that you're really, you know, focused on the mission that you said you were, 
you're doing, right? Like, especially if it's health. Yeah. Especially if it's health. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I agree with that. I can, I can really, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, any any other items or, or, or things that stuck out to you? Uh, not so much a key business insight, but it was just, I thought it was hilarious. The one guy who tied, who taped his two jewels together because it wasn't strong enough or whatever. It, was. Oh, yeah, it might not yeah, have been jewel yeah. yet. Might have been an early prototype, but mm-hmm. he taped it together just because one hit was strong enough. It was like, it's just such a hard thing that they're trying to do. They're trying to make a healthy product, but also deliver a, a powerful hit. It's like, they're almost fighting against each other yeah so. yeah yeah <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy i mean i will say this knowing what i do know about cigarettes and and vaping and um, i don't know a lot so i'll tell you that much um i can't see this being something that just goes away like there's going to be another company there's going to be a some way that this is trying to there, some company whether it's big tobacco whether it's whoever is going to try to do this and see how can we figure this out because tobacco is such a big industry uh and it's and smoking is a big industry and we know the health uh damages from it but it doesn't stop people from still doing it so i can't see this being the end i can't see jewel being the end of the whole vaping and trying to figure out a sustainable business model in this arena no i mean i see it as like streaming music right yeah. napster was at the public enemy number one at one point and they mm-hmm. dismantled it and then limewire came around and then now everybody streams music on their phone 15 years later right yeah, so right, right. i i agree with you i think they were the first mm-hmm. and as the first they you know they were the, they were the first through the walls and mm-hmm. had to face everybody but i mm-hmm. think as the industry grows like mm-hmm. you have your people who are still going to do it and it may not be a deck of corn but right, right. um it's still um uh, it's still gonna be a big industry mm-hmm. um and you know and i think they kind of took a lot of the hits for the players that have been come after them absolutely absolutely i was intrigued i was i was i was definitely uh interest uh entertained by the story and and seeing how it was all put together and uh it was a little bit more it was a, it was a little bit more than I thought it was going to be like from a business perspective. So I really enjoyed it overall from that from that angle. Yeah, me too. It was way more business than I thought it would be. Where they went into the specifics of like the venture uh, capitalists and mm-hmm. the angel investors who you know uh, finally came around. Like there were a lot of business things in it that I didn't know I would get when we first turned it on. So mm-hmm. I was yeah, I was a little surprised, pleasantly surprised. I thought it was good. So. Right. And I also, one last point, I like the design aspect. Uh, I really like how they show the power of design and the impact of design. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that a lot too. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? I think a lot of times, and this isn't me being biased. Well, it is me being biased, actually, because I am a designer. And, uh, you know, to see the power of what design can do in regards to influencing people's behavior and and and, you know, especially with regards to something health related it's 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 not something to be taken lightly and i i don't think it's something we should just play around with no i mean if you look at the designs for their competition or the early competition right the other e-cigarettes they all looked like cigarettes right. they all looked like right. Right. you know the original product so mm-hmm. just that whole mentality of we don't want it to look like that we want it to look like something that came from san francisco as they put it yeah that like it, it, it just it just shows you how important design is so exactly. yeah completely exactly. agree with you all right so that's a wrap on this week's episode we hope you enjoyed our review and thoughts on this series hopefully it provided you with some value and inspiration as you navigate through your business journey as always if you have a question you would like us to answer on the show shoot us a message on any of our social media channels also don't forget to subscribe and share on spotify and itunes see you again soon in the meantime keep keep grinding the business grind is for entertainment purposes opinions expressed are those solely of the host and guests Please consult with a professional and exercise discretion before engaging in any business endeavors. I'm out here on the grind. I'm out here on the grind.